How many hungry for God's word this morning? Are y'all ready for the word of God? I want you to open your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. The title of my message this morning is Redeeming the Time. Redeeming the Time. We know that this year for our church, the theme for our year is redemption. That God is bringing things into our lives, that God is restoring things, and that God is the God of redemption. And as a result of that, over the course of the next couple months, I'll be really, really emphasizing that as we go through. And then throughout the year, you'll see me bring these messages back up as the Lord permits. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 21, I want you to see this. It says in verse 15, he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Then he makes this statement I've been simmering on, redeeming the time, redeeming the time because the days are what, y'all? Evil, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, submitting to one another, he says, in the fear of God. This word, particular word, redeeming, in the Hebrew, as I looked it up, it means to buy, and we know that re- redeem means to buy back, to purchase back. It means to buy out of, to redeem from. Used of our redemption by Christ from the curse and yoke of the law. To redeem as spoken of time. Now, this, this is the thing that got me with this. Is, he said, redeeming the time. What in the world does that mean? He says, redeem as spoken of time. So it means to buy out of, to redeem from, used of our redemption by Christ from the curse and yoke of the law, to redeem as spoken of time. This sense of the expression is still more evident in Colossians chapter 4, we're going to go there, as redeeming the time by prudent, we want to redeem the time by prudent and blameless conduct. We want to redeem the time by prudent and blameless conduct, gaining as much time and opportunity as possible in view of persecution and death. Gaining as much time as an opportunity as possible in view of persecution and death. The word generally means to buy up, to buy all that is anywhere to be bought, and not to allow the suitable moment to pass by unheeded but to make it one's own, but to make it one's own. I like this, y'all. I like this. The problem with us as humans is oftentimes we think that we have more time than we really have. So we live our lives, and instead of us consuming the time that we have, we end up giving away or wasting time that we assume that we have. It is appointed for man wants to die and then after that the judgment. But for every man, you have been given an allotment of time that God has purposed for your life on the face of this planet. And we have to realize that when the, in the grand scope of eternity, we are on this planet for a short period of time. But what we do 
in this short period of time will reverberate throughout eternity and it sets us up for our eternal state and condition. But what happens is, as we live on this planet, and whether you're 10 years old or whether you're 80 years old, we just assume that I have more time when nobody knows of the time that they have and that all of our times are in the hand of the master. And what we have to do is really become circumspect in our thinking and in our mind. We have to really pare things back, get to the root of this, and really understand that God wants us to use our time wisely and understand how valuable it really is. Saints, I don't have time to be playing around, to be messing around. To be getting involved in things that aren't aligning with my purpose. To be out here messing around and frivolously wasting. I want to buy as much time as I can and not waste any of it on frivolous things. And for all of us here in this room, we have to see that this is very important for us, especially going forward. Because I don't know if you figured it out, but it seems like time is speeding up. It seemed like a year will just pass like that. A month will just pass like that. A week will just pass like that. And then the next thing you know, you look around and you say, what happened? We're already in 2023? We were just talking about 1999 in Y2K. And look how fast... Two decades have gone, and now we're in 2023, and you see that time is just speeding up, and that we don't have as much time as we think that we have. So I love the Apostle Paul. He says here in verse 15, see that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, he says, but as wise. As we're navigating throughout the world, we want to Make sure, to just like we focused on last year, we want wisdom and revelation. And we want to make sure that as we're going forth in life, that we make decisions wisely. We choose relationships wisely. We get into things wisely. That we're, we're allowing the wisdom of God to truly come upon. Ooh, I feel the anointing on this. The, the wisdom of God to truly come upon us so that as we're navigating through this world, we're being wise and not foolish. Man, how foolish is it to spend our lives just wasting away at the club, wasting away at the bar, wasting away messing around with this, wasting away doing these drugs, and wasting away drinking all this, and, and just wasting away think thinking we're really flossing, but we're just wasting time. Can I have an amen, y'all? Can I have an amen, y'all? That we're just wasting time. They're just wasting time, chasing after this and chasing after that. And so Paul says, see then that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, buying back as much time as you can obtaining much time. God wants us to, to, to buy back time. He doesn't want us to sell it. We don't sell time for frivolous things, but this is what the devil wants you to do. Just give, just give, just give your time away to this. It, it, yeah, yeah, we got them. Yeah, demons, get them. Make them waste it away. Smoking on that. Look, they just messed up. God had all this purpose for them, but they just just selling their time away. They think they got a lot of time. That's how the devil thinks. If I can get this person to waste their time doing things that are not according to God's purpose, then I've already got them. I've shipwrecked them according to their purpose. When it comes to their purpose, I got them. But he says, redeeming the time He says, why? Because the days are evil. We can try to put a pretty face on what's going on in the culture, what's going on in the world. But according to the scripture, we are living in an evil day. People will do things that are, that are so evil and detestable and have no, no problem with doing it. It doesn't mean that we're hopeless. We know how to find our peace and our refuge in God. But God has us in the midst of great turmoil that's going all around us. Now, he, will, he keeps us in the midst of it. 
But let's not be naive to what's going on in the world. The world is evil, y'all. There's a lot of wickedness going on in the world. And so we cannot deny that. We can't turn a deaf ear to that. We have to be able to see that. But as we're seeing that, we understand the value of redeeming time, making sure that when it comes to me being prudent and blameless in conduct and having uh, and the opportunity that I have, that I maximize this opportunity and I don't waste it away because I don't know when the Lord will call me home. He says, and do not be drunk with wine, he says, in which is dissipation. He says, but be filled with the Spirit. How many know we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? He says, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. I love this. I love this. So now what happens is instead of us being filled and drunk, and doing the things that the world is doing, we're, we're getting consumed with the Holy Spirit. We're being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then out of that begins to come a song, a hymn, a spiritual song, singing and making melody unto our heart, unto the Lord. And I want to just say this. When I first got saved, I was so intrigued by the Scripture and so drawn to the Word of God. My wife will tell you, I would go to practice and I would come home. And when I get home, I spend about an hour or so with my wife and, and chilling and everything. Then I would go in my prayer room probably about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. I'd go in my prayer closet at 9 o'clock. And then I wouldn't come out of my prayer closet until like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I would do this. And I wouldn't just do this for days. I would do this for months and years. Until finally, until finally, God started to deal with me. They said, okay, I, I've, I've, I've sucked you in, and I've poured into you, and I've detoxed you from the world, and I've helped you to see the value of this, and I've kept your wife sane. Amen. I've kept your wife sane as, as you've gone through this transformation process. But then, he's, but then I would go in there to pray, and he said, say, I'm not here anymore. Go spend time with your wife. And I'd be like, Lord, here I am. Fill me again. Fill me up, God. And then I wouldn't feel nothing. I'm like, what's up? I would, Lord, where are you at? I said, I'm over there chilling next to your wife. You need to go spend time with your wife. And so I learned how to make the adjustment. But let me say this. All that happened, and I thank God for that opportunity, but something really shifted in my spirit. As I was going through this process and God began to show me the one of the greatest things that you could do. This is good. You want to get the word of God in you, and you should. But your life is going to change when you learn how to be a worshiper. You learn how to worship. The Father is seeking worshipers. He's seeking such. He's seeking worshipers. He's seeking, ooh, he's seeking worshipers. Not, not just consumers, but givers. And your worship is what you give. We sit here and you're receiving the word of God. Praise God. We should. This is what we do. But when you come in these doors and you, and you go forth and you begin to worship God and open up your spirit, that's what opens up your spiritual chamber that causes God's transmission to get through to you. It always doesn't just come through the message that's preached. You're sitting there in your seat, and all of a sudden, the, the, word, the voice of God just begins to resound within your spirit because you become a worshiper. Your lifestyle becomes a worshiper. You become a worshiper. And so I see this sometimes even in our church sometimes. The worship is going on, and people sitting there like this. Well, I'm just telling you, you're not going to get nothing. You're not going to get much. It's when 
I'm studying my Bible, and then God says, okay, now, I'm going to teach you how to worship because that's what's going to unlock the chamber for you to really get, get a hold of revelation from me. Because let me tell you all something. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be no preaching going on. But I do hear some angels and some seraphims singing, holy, 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 Lord God. Can I have an amen? Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So, and this is how we get out of, we, we, we get into a place where we start to redeem the time and realize some of the things that we can do to help us to position. He says, singing to yourselves with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, he says to the Lord. He says, giving thanks, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks for all things. For all things. And we talked about this last week, but we, we learn to just, man, give God the thanks and the praise that is due him. And to never forget where Jesus found you. And then always have a level of appreciation. You endear yourself to God and make him want to do more for you when you appreciate what you do have. You appreciate what you do have. When you stop and say, God, I thank you for what I have, I give you praise. And we bless God. Well, that, that's what causes God to continue to open up the chambers of heaven and bless you and bless you. He says here in verse, uh, in verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another, he says, in the fear of God. This is what happens for us, but we have to see that our time it's not anything to play with. We don't play around with it. That we see it as a valuable commodity. So making decisions about time, I want to redeem the time. I want to make sure that I'm purchasing, I'm holding on to as much as I can, and I don't waste it doing things that could shipwreck me and cause me to lose opportunity and then lose my time here on the earth. Sometimes, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I sit back and I say, man, I got saved at a young age, but I still sometimes I think, man, what would it have been like if I really was on fire for God when I was in, in high school? What about college? That's one of the times in my life that I just, man, I just wish I would have listened in college. Listen, and what would I have done if, I, if, man, what could I have done if I would have just been on fire for God in college? Think about that. Think about it. Now, I don't beat myself up over it. We're, we're far removed from that. But I still do think. And what happens for a lot of people is, oh, I'm not worried about it. Well, I'm not worried about it. I'm just saying, man, I wish I would have been fine. And if I can tell, if I can say that and then turn around and then t take one of these young people and say, don't do what I did. Don't waste your time in college messing around with stuff that can shipwreck you or potentially take you down the wrong path. Redeem the time and use even that time in college as a, as a means to go out and continue to grow and develop your life and develop in your relationship with God. And you can be on fire in college, too. Christianity is, isn't just for old people, y'all. Can I have an amen? Some people think that. Some people think that. Use the, the time that you have. You in your 20s, man, that's, oh, my goodness. Use that time to just be on fire for God. You in high school, be on fire for God in high school. You in middle school, be on fire for God. You have an opportunity right now. Don't waste your time. Take full advantage of it. Why? Because the days are evil and God is trying to set you up for something greater. Can I have an amen? Go to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 2 on down to 6. Verse 
verse 2. It says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the, for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. It says, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, those that are not Christians. And then he says this same statement again, redeeming the what? The time. Redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer, he says, each one, continue earnestly in prayer, be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. We want to make sure that as a people, as we're redeeming the time, that when it comes to our prayer life, that we're being vigilant in it, and we're making sure that we continue in it. Um, and as we're doing it, we're always incorporating thanksgiving into what we're doing. This helps to set the stage for us to take full advantage of our time when we have a spirit of, of, of thanksgiving upon us and our hearts are always bent towards thanking God and being a blessing. The devil wants you to have bitterness in your heart towards God because things may not have turned out the way that you've always planned them. So if the devil can get you to have an ought with God or be become bitter towards God, resent God or whatever in your life, then he's really, he shipwrecked your ability to really progress forward and have God really push you. But when we always pause and we have a sense of thanksgiving about us when it comes to our life or just what God is doing in our lives, the devil doesn't know what to do, that, do with that. And this is one of the reasons why when it came to the life of Job, Job's wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, nah, you speak as a foolish woman. I, I can't, I, no, 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 no. Because that's the trap. That's the trick. Get, get you to get mad at God so that now there's an issue between you and God. But when we're in continuing prayer, we continue in prayer and we're vigilant about it. And then we're also making sure as we're vigilant about it that we do it with thanksgiving. Now we're setting ourselves up for something great in our lives. That we're thankful. We're thankful people. It's so easy to look at what somebody else has and become so ungrateful for what you have. You'll never be satisfied if you're constantly just measuring, measuring your success by what somebody else has or doesn't have. Right? So if you think that you're somebody because you're doing better than somebody else, you may not realize that they're actually doing better than you, even though they don't have all the stuff you have. Because in their house, they got some peace and you don't have none. Can I have an amen? In their house, they got some joy, but you don't have none. And in their house, in their house, they've got, they're not all stressed out, but you got all kinds of stress. In their house, they got a full head of hair, but your hair all oh, fell out. I'm just <laughs> wow, stress will do it to you. <laughs> so what happens is you realize that we don't measure, they that measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves among themselves are not wise. There's no need for me to do that. So now I'm always thinking about how God has blessed me, and it keeps us in a position of thanksgiving. Lord, I just thank you right now. I may not have all this. I may not have all that. But God, when I get in my car, you are there, and your presence just comes. Can I have an amen? I can feel your presence in my car. I was driving this week. I, I, my truck. I got a big truck, right, AT4, and there's something wrong with the back of the truck, and water seeped into the back of my truck through the window, and then it came down into the floorboard and my passenger side, and it was flooding my truck. I said, Lord Jesus, <laughs> just water all over my truck. So they had to take my truck, and they 
they're working on it right now, and hopefully they get it done this week, but they're working on it right now to get everything fixed. And they gave me a Chevy Malibu. (laughs) But I tell y'all what, I got in my Malibu, and I was dipping in that thing just like I'm dipping in my truck. And the presence of God, and I got, can I have an amen? When I got in that thing too, I felt the presence of God. I told my wife, I like this thing. This scooter is, I like this. I feel it. I feel it up in here. I ain't tripping, y'all. I'm not high maintenance. I tell y'all, just give me something and some music and I'll roll. Can I have an amen, y'all? But you realize that you stay thankful. You stay thankful. And all things give what? Thanks. In all things you give thanks. He says, and continue in your prayers with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God will open a door to us, a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, which I'm in chains. He says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom. Now look at this, y'all. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. This is important. A lot of times we waste time messing around with the wrong people. Somebody gave me something over here. There's some fire over here. We waste so much time messing around with the wrong people. And we love people. We love people. But understand that sometimes people can suck the life out of you. And drain your time to the point where you look up and they never get fixed, but then you have lost time that you can never get back. We have to redeem the time because the times are evil. And we have to see here that what he's saying is that we have to walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. So it's not that you don't deal with people that are outside, but you walk in wisdom towards them. You gotta be careful here. Is this person just trying to suck the life out of me, man? Why is it when I get around this person, I feel drained. I feel depleted. I just feel so depleted. And, and, and that's not how relationships should, should work. There's a place for that. There's, there's a period of time for that. But if you guys have been friends for 20 years and you still walk away feeling dead. Wow. You have to stop and reevaluate and walk in wisdom. I have to walk in wisdom towards those that are outside. So I have to always, we have to make sure that we're being conscious of this. Man, I got to be, I got to make sure that I'm really, really paying attention to this because I don't want to, I don't want to give away my time. I want to make sure that I'm using my time wisely because I only have so much of it. Man, can you come out and do this for us? No, I can't do that. Can you come over here? I don't know. I need to pray about that and see God. Erica will tell you I get all kinds of invitations to go preach everywhere. I don't go everywhere. I pray, God, do you want me to do that? Because people will pull you so far, you'll be looking like Stretch Armstrong. Some of y'all don't remember Stretch Armstrong. They have you all out of whack. And you wonder, man, how come I feel just so depleted? Well, because you're not redeeming the time. We have to learn the value and the art of telling people no. I can't do it. I can't do it. Can you do it? I can't do it. I'm sorry. But what you going to be doing? I'm going to be on my couch. (laughs) Getting refreshed. (laughs) I'm going to be on my couch. I'm going to be chilling on my couch, just chilling. What, what, you, what you mean you can't come? I, I can't come. But you're the pastor. Yeah, but somebody else. We hired somebody else. They could do that too. I, 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 Moses, said, Moses said, raise somebody else up or just kill me or get me out of here because I can't do it all. So I just raised somebody else. He got it. He got it. Praise the Lord. I can't do it all. 
We have to learn how to do this. We have to, we have to learn how to tell people no. We have to learn how to tell your kids no. We can't do it. Can we go here? Let's go. No, we're going to chill. Here, take this toy. Sit down. Shut up. We don't. Just play over there on the video game. You're good. So I'm about to watch some TV and get refreshed. I've been working all week, dealing with folks all week, riding on the BART, being in traffic, dealing with all kinds of mess, and people cussing me out on the job, and people doing stuff. And can I get a break? Can I just chill out right here? But I want to go here. No, we go there maybe next week. But this week, I need to get refreshed. Can I have an amen, y'all? But some of us, we, we don't understand the value of the time, so we just keep stretching ourselves, and then we turn around and we look, and, and then we find ourselves in a tough situation. But then we do this with people who are outside. We don't walk in wisdom towards people that are outside. So then the people that are outside, they really don't care about your time. We have to make sure that we walk in wisdom towards people that are out. They're a good person, but good person doesn't mean that they have been sent by God. Just because there are a lot of great people, but is, that, is God telling them to say that to you or to get involved in that? Is it, is it God? Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. Now, look at verse 6, y'all. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with what, y'all? So, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Now, this is important. I remember James Davis, he taught us this years ago. He taught us we want to have grace, and we want to always make sure that we are gracious. But never forget that salt is a preserver, he says, season with salt. So I want to I speak with grace, but then I also want to give you something that's going to preserve you like the truth. Truth is going to be that element that also brings wholeness into a person's life, and it helps to preserve them. And so when he says season with salt, what he's saying is, is you also have to give something that's going to, pre- the preservative that, and that truth that's going to help to carry them and sustain them through life. So as I'm speaking to somebody inside the church or even outside the church, we want to be, we want to have our, our speech filled with grace, but it needs to be seasoned with what, y'all? With salt. That you're going to hear the, the truth, though. And that's what's going to set you free. It's going to preserve you. Let your speech always be with grace, but yet seasoned with some salt. What happens for us as Christians and just people in general is we want to say the thing that's gracious, but we don't say the thing that's going to help to sustain people. And so we think that being a Christian means that you're just, okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah, just do that. You know, whatever, you know, you want to do. And, and we just, we, we, we're so soft. And we let our, our speech be with grace, but it's not seasoned with salt. It's like, this is great. That's like, that's, that sounds like, a, oh, yeah, I'm going to be very gracious to you. But at the same time, I'm also going to give you some things that are going to help to preserve you so that you don't go out here and lose your time, but you redeem your time. That don't seem like a good idea. Now, you may want to do that. That's fine. You can make that decision. But I don't know if that's a decision that's filled with wisdom and that God's really breathing on that. I don't know if God's breathing on that. Doesn't sound to me like God is breathing on that. Well, pastor, don't you think what? I don't know about that. So you want to have the testimony in your life that when people come to you, there's going to be grace and there's going to be truth. There's going to be grace and there's going to be salt. Jesus was full of grace and what? Truth. You want the seasoning to be just perfect. You don't want to just have so much grace that it, that it just, you know, gives so much license and people just feel like they can just do whatever. You don't want to have so much salt that now you done messed up the meal and people don't feel like they can do anything. But you want to have some grace but seasoned with what? You want to have, oh, yeah, that's a good meal right there. 
That people leave you and they go away and their, their mind may be saying, I don't agree with what that man of God or what that woman of God is saying. But their spirit was saying, oh, no, that was some of Minister Jennifer's gumbo right there. That's what we need. We need that. Can I have an amen, y'all? That that's a good meal. Your spirit is saying yes. Your mind may be saying no. But the beauty of God is sometimes God will offend your mind in order to get to your heart. He'll offend your mind. And, but, but, but the goal is, I gotta, I'm getting to their heart. And for us... Our speech should be with grace, but yet seasoned with salt. And that's the wisdom that we need. And it helps us to help people as they're going through this life to redeem the time. I can't get mauled in that. I can't, it's, that's going to mess up. I'm going to waste 10 years messing around with that. I done wasted five years messing around with this fool. He still ain't changed. He's still not trying to do right. And now we just wasted 10 years. I done dated this fool for 10 years and still don't got a ring on my finger. I need to smack myself for that. (laughs) And you can't get the years back. Well, pastor, we're common law. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. We common law. Y'all ain't no common law. Y'all shacking right now. You got to break the yoke, break the chain, come out there and try to get some time back because you done messed up and wasted so much time and he not going to change. She not going to change. I know I'm preaching right now. I'm getting happy in my spirit. He not going to change. And so why am I wasting my time? Why am I wasting my time at this particular job, when I see God then open the door, but my cousin gave me the job and I'm trying to be nice. Well, you better tell your cousin, man, I'm out of here. I'm trying to help you with your business, man. This thing ain't working. God's not breathing on this. I got to go forth. I didn't wasted 10 years with you. I know I'm talking the truth right now. Some of y'all looking like mm, exit stage left. But, but that's what happens. We, we make decisions, we make decisions, and we waste our time, and we're making soulish decisions, not spiritual decisions, not decisions keeping in view that God wants us to do what? To redeem our time because the days are evil. Saints, I want to just say this to every single one of us is in closing. You don't know when the Lord is going to take you home. You do not know. And we make the terrible mistake of assuming that we have more than we have. And so a day goes by, a day goes by, a day goes by, and then we treat our lives as if they're just in our hands. When God who sits high and he looks low, has determined a point in time for every single one of us. We have to redeem this time. We can't treat it wrong. We have to see this as an opportunity to make sure that we buy up as much as we can, we retain as much as we can, and we don't waste any of it. And we allow ourselves to be positioned, I like this, in such suitable positions that when God says, checkmate, I want you to move right here. I need you to move right here. I want you to go right here. Okay, now, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it. You're at the right spot. Over here. And then we have people around us that can say, hey, that we can run things off of and say, hey, what do you think about this? I want you to pray through this with me. I'll never forget, I was just telling, I think it was Deacon Terrence, I was, we were trying to figure out um, what school we were going to send our kids to. And I was driving down the 680 with my oldest son, Nip, and I'm driving in the car with him. Oh, we're going to go to Valley Christian, we're going to go to, you know, Ammon, or we're going to go to, and, and, and so we were just kind of talking, and I said, Nippy, I said, hey, man. I said, son, what what school you want to go to? What school you want to go to? 
And this guy, <laughs> he looked at me and he said, he said, I don't know, Dad. I need you to lead me. I'll never forget that. I don't know, Dad. I need you to lead me. Man, that thing, even to this day, just touches my heart. Because I think, and I say, and I say, and then I say, okay, man, I got to help this guy to have some wisdom. I didn't know that when we, me and my wife prayed about it, we felt like we were supposed to go to Bishop O'Dell. Then I didn't know that eventually I was going to become the head football coach at Bishop O'Dell, that, that we were going to win a state championship and do all this stuff. I was going to meet this person, that person. And then next thing you know, I would develop friendships with some people that are in this church now because of that experience. And then you go through and then you see how God, we're not wasting time. You're prayerfully considering. And sometimes you may not know what, or what, what to do, but with time, you don't know what to do, but you're wise enough to gain counsel from people that can help you to stay on the right path that God has assigned in your life. So you don't waste those years. You've redeemed the time. And then now I look back and I just see how it, it, how it all worked out and it was a blessing. But saints, let me say this. It doesn't always work out. You see what stuff doesn't work always, doesn't always work out in people's lives. And this is the reason why God, he says it several times in these verses, we need wisdom. Redeeming the time because the times are evil. Right now, even some of you in this room, you're in the middle of some of the stuff that I've talked talk, talking about this morning. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. You don't know how much you have. Some of you may be in relationships that you know God is telling you, cut that off. Stop trying to, 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 to make it work when God is saying, no, this isn't, shut it down. You done wasted 10 years on this. And that you can't get those years back. You and I have to make sure that as we're navigating in this world, that we don't allow the devil to rob us of our time. Because our time is so valuable. Lord, we thank you this morning for these two passages of Scripture where you clearly said, redeeming the time. My prayer is this morning, Lord, that as we have opportunity on this planet to do good and to glorify your name and to walk prudently on this planet, that you would help us through wise counsel, through prayer, through worship. The time that we have, we don't waste it. Lord, we've wasted time. I've wasted time on things. Those years I cannot get back, but God, I thank you that the years that I have, that I will not waste by your grace. And Lord, help us as a people to take our time seriously, that we don't just assume that we have it. We only have what we have. And God, I just pray this morning that we would redeem the time because the days are evil. That we would walk circumspectly in the midst of great perversion. And Lord, if we need to make decisions, that we make decisions with wisdom so that we don't end up going down a path and then wasting more time. Father, I ask this morning for us to for, for, for this morning, for every single one of us, for us to embrace the timing of the Lord and help us to be keen when it comes to timing. Whether it's business decisions, relational decisions, church decisions, financial decisions, that we would be so locked into timing that we would never miss a step with you. That, you, that we would redeem the time that we have and that would you, we would use it for your glory. Thank you for giving us time, God. 
thank you for giving us time that our times are in your hands and we give you glory for it in Jesus mighty name somebody said amen y'all come on everybody stand to your feet in this room there may be some that are saying pastor I've, I've, I've just wasted a bunch of time don't worry about that understand what has happened but, but don't beat yourself up over something that you cannot get back what you do have make sure that you manage it correctly in the sight of God and you allow the, the Lord to use you and redeem the time that you have but don't beat yourself up over it there's nothing wrong with looking back like I said and I've been saying and saying man I mean it could have been it should have been but yeah I get it but look at me now can I have an amen but look at me now look what God's doing now and continue to go forth as God sees fit to to give you and to bless you with the time that you have but this morning I believe there's people in this room that when it comes to the mismanagement of your time that you need to make that right with God that you've never stopped and said God please forgive me for wasting my time on stuff that was not profitable help me to make the right decisions going forward there are people in this room I know that you're here that need to stop and just come before the throne room of God and say God please help me with my time help me to manage my affairs and my time right and redeem what I do have and that is a step of humility that all of us need to take but there's people here this morning I know that you're saying man there's no use of dwelling on shoulda, coulda, woulda, but there is a place for saying, God, help me to manage my time. If I'm ministering to you, I want you to come to the altar right now. We want to pray with you. Come on down to the altar. Don't you let the devil stop you from coming down to the altar. Come with great expectancy. Come with great boldness. Come with certainty knowing that God brought you here for such a time as this. When it comes to your time, God is the one who gives away. He's the one that sustains. But be honest, I'm tired of being in the wilderness. Why wander in the wilderness when I can enter into my promised land? Help me, Lord, to redeem my time. Come on, altar work. Let's pray with them. Let's touch and agree and believe God with them. Come on, let's pray with them this morning. Such an awesome presence. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Everyone else, if you stay, stay in a mode of prayer. And let's believe God.